All right, so what's up with AEW booking? Oh, my God. Well, I, 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 uh, over the weekend, I talked to a couple people who booked um, national promotions, and we were discussing AEW booking and everything. And one of the things, one person who I know who actually follows us very closely and kind of told me that on last Wednesday's show, I think that there were more than 60 people that were, you know, either in matches or involved in run-ins or involved in, you know, stuff. Um, and I'm just, it, you know, are surrounding the matches. I'm not, I don't think I'm even talking about Pinnacle and, um, and, um, you know, the, um, the inner circle, but just, you know, all the people that were around the ring in that, uh, women's tag match. I mean, there was like a million and all that. And it was kind of like, that's too many people for anyone to get over on television is if you're, th if you're throwing 60 people out there. I mean, you've got to, you know, I think that's, that's one of the, you know, I mean, like every, everything's, there's, oh, there's always issues and there's always things that you can improve on. And I mean, the big, the big thing, I mean, as far as, you know, they have to figure out what they want to do when it comes to, I mean, it's, it's a weird thing because, one of the reasons that that pay-per-view, well, you know, a main reason that pay-per-view did so well is because of the direction that they booked. That's the same direction that has run off a lot of the women's audience, which is the heavy blood and the heavy violence and things like that. And now, so that, you know, it's like you're, you, if you want to get the women back, I don't think that these, you know, some of the things that they've been doing, again, if you do anything, I think anything in moderation probably would be okay. But it's been a lot of blood lately and a lot of, you know, I mean, you, you know, it's like that that match with um, your own Kip Sabian. Those kind of matches have been working. They didn't really, you know, I mean, it, it it worked to a degree on Wednesday, but certainly not at the level that it has worked in the past. It was, a, I guess you could call it diminishing returns. But, um, you know, when you do those kinds of matches, those matches on Wednesday night have been drawing the out of the ring, unique style, street fight, weird matches. But at the same time of late, you know, there are things that have clearly driven women fans off. I mean, the, the number of homes that, that watch AW is, is pretty much consistent and it's, it's, it hasn't dropped. But what's dropped is the second person watching, and that's why the total audience is down, especially in the eighteen to thirty-four or eighteen to well eighteen to thirty-four, especially. But women, women is as the key one. So I mean, that's like the big, that's like the big issue as far as the the ratings go. I mean, there's other things, and I don't, you know, I wouldn't overplay last week's rating in the sense of um, it was down, uh, but it was also. Um, NXT was up, and a lot of that has to do with destination. I think that, you know, I said this to, to Garrett the other night. This is actually before the conversations that I had. But pro wrestling, to me, when pro wrestling works, there's got to be a destination when you're watching it. Like, there's you're building up for something um, clear and, and somewhat major very soon. Now, with AEW doing four pay-per-views a year, the destination, I mean, they, they, they should have a destination show once a month or do more pay-per-views or something to where, you know, I mean, I mean, like, uh, some places used to have destination. Every single week was destination, was the destination. But that's because, and every week would be the loaded card. And obviously they, they could do that. They could make the weekly television show the loaded card where every week you've got your championship matches and you've got your grudge matches and whatever the big feud is you have all of the top guys every single week wrestling in in you know important matches building to the next week and things like that that can be done um that's not what they do but but you could do that i don't know if it's advisable it's sort of in a weird way what what ron smackdown do for the most part, I mean, there's exceptions, but just like tonight, you know, I mean, you, you had the top guys, you didn't have them in their, in their big match because WrestleMania is coming, but you had them in matches to build WrestleMania, but they all, for the most part, most of the top guys and the key guys were, were wrestling in singles matches as opposed to doing six mans and things like that. So, um, but I mean, I think the thing is, is, is the, the attempt to, push so many people there's only going to be a finite number of stars no matter what 
And I think that you have to figure out who they are and, and really push them as opposed to trying to make everybody happy and get as many people on television and as many people in angles as possible. In which case, you're over-angling the show and the angles are going to mean little because um, when the show's over, I mean, you should have, like, when the show's over, you should have two or three things that when the show's over, you go, like, those were the key points and, and that's what we're talking about as opposed to a lot of little things because if there's a lot of little things, they're all little and they're probably not going to have a lot of effect. So, um, I mean, I, that's just basic booking rules across the board. I mean, it's, just, it's not just particular to AEW, but I do sense, you know, that one of the things is so much guys around the ring, so much interference. Uh, I think that the only match that didn't have a whole bunch of stuff going on was the Christian and Kazarian match, which also, you know, ended up being the highest point, but that, you know, the highest rated part of the show, but that's, that's not, that's just, that's actually just coincidence because people don't know that going in. Um, but, um, so I think that that's one of the, uh, one of the, the key things that, that they really need to work on is figuring out. It's like, you can't push 40 young guys as stars. You gotta, you know, you've gotta figure out, you know, your four or five and go with them. And they gotta be regular featured characters every week. And also, and I talked about this already too. I, I think that like if you shoot an angle, I mean, you need to have a match. And so many times we've had teases of things and they just kind of are, we've, we have them and they don't really necessarily go somewhere. And, and, um, a lot of times like, You'll have a program that looks like you just started the program and then you just drift away. Cause I keep, keep thinking of like Cody and MJF where they had like this, you know, this, the friendship thing and all the teases and you knew he was going to stab him in the back and then finally stabs him in the back. And then they do the big grudge match and MJF wins and then they never wrestle again. And it's like the whole thing is, is that, you know, the baby face in a, in a sense, Cody shouldn't give that up. And, you know, there's the other things like Jericho. Um, losing the world title and then kind of blowing it off and never getting a rematch. And it's kind of like everybody should be going for the, for the world championship that's top guy. And so that's just a, a couple of things that, um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, everything's going to, you know, the, whatever the numbers are now in two weeks, everything's going to be different this week. Um, whatever the number is this week to me, I mean, it's like it, it is what it is. NXT's got a huge show head to head with them. It's a takeover. It's a stronger lineup and they should do better. You know, if NXT doesn't, you know, I mean, they, they, NXT may cut its throat in the sense of if everybody or the majority of people go and watch Peacock, they may actually, you know, not do so well. I don't, I actually believe they will do well, but, but it's, it, there's that possibility. But whether they do or they don't, it doesn't matter. This is a one week thing and they're not going to be on Wednesday after this week anyway. So, um, I mean, if, you know, if NXT beats them by 400,000 viewers, which would be a disaster on it in a sense, it really doesn't matter because next week everything is, is different again. So everything kind of starts again. Uh, with with the show a week from Wednesday and at that point, I mean, I just got to figure out what they want to do I mean if you if you want to be an ECW and get a Guy's audience and your total number of viewers will be down But you are going for that audience the problem with the, the heavy blood though usually doesn't last forever anyway because usually you go with heavy blood and you get a run and then you burn the audience out um, on the blood and then usually it's trouble I mean, that's been the history with territories. And if you look at any place that really relied on blood, um, there were there were times where they did, in fact, have success, sometimes even for a year or two um, and a few times for longer than that. But in the long run, um, those places usually burned out when they were going with the heavy, heavy. Now, of course, this isn't the heavy, heavy blood, but it's also a different era. Um, but, you know, they they have to kind of figure out what they want to do. And if, if, if the idea is, is just go for that guy audience and make it a guy's show, then the total viewer number will be lower and that's fine. And the 18 to 49 number will be lower and that's the direction that you're going. But if you're going for maximum numbers, you cannot alienate the women and getting women in is very tough, especially if you've 
uh, run them off, it's going to be really tough if they have decided to do that because they've been. It's been a while. Um, I mean, the women's numbers have dropped. Um, I mean, it hasn't been that long, but it's been it has been consistent um, in the last several weeks that it's not there. And there was even trouble a couple of months ago, but they were they started to get it back. And obviously, around December, you know, the December was really a peak. They did really, really well there. And then in you know, since then, it has kind of dissipated. So, um, you know, there was a time where, and it wasn't that long ago, where it looked like uh, AEW was going to by the end of this year be beaten raw, and that's with NXT. Um, that's with NXT going head to head, keeping them down where they would have, those, those lines would have, you know, cause raw was dropping and AEW was gaining and that's not the case anymore. Uh, one of the differences is, is the look of the show. And I, I really think that is a, that is a tough one because average wrestling fan, the look of the show is so important. We never thought, I never realized how important it was and I probably should have. Um, and that is probably one of the things that the pandemic has taught the most is, you know, when you're in a bad looking environment, people aren't going to watch. They're going to tune out at, at, with great numbers. And for a long time, AEW had the better looking environment. They had better camera shots, they had better building and all that. Then WWE spent an incredible amount of money to reverse that and to an extent reversed it. They do have the, better looking show because AEW can't go in there and do you know you know one and a half or 1.3 million dollar budget shows every week because they would go out of business doing it or, or maybe not out of business but they'd be losing incredible amounts of money whereas WWE can afford it so that's really a huge advantage for WWE right now um and and always will be um that they, is that is that big budget for television even if um you know better matches or even if better booking i mean and, and better booking is, is sometimes very overrated because i just remember like like in the 90s paul Heyman always believed that you know he would be able in the long run outbook these guys but in the reality was he didn't even have a chance to beat wcw in ratings ever because even as absolute dog shit crap as wcw booking was and Heyman was able to beat them on pay-per-views um, you know, because of the hardcore audience, they could never beat them on ratings because WCW show still had the higher budget and it looked nicer and the stars then become bigger stars. So that's a reality that, um, you know, in chasing WWE, um, you know, I mean, there's going to be people who are only going to go for, they're only going to watch the, the major league. You don't see AAA baseball. On ESPN doing any kind of numbers you don't see minor league hockey on television doing any kind of numbers you barely see, well major league hockey barely does either but I mean the whole point you don't see um, big numbers for the non-major you know even in MMA with Bellator you don't see that AEW is actually the exception to the rule you there, there's very few things I mean even secondary football leagues don't draw you know I mean XFL you know, XFL had a shot, and they were out of business in, what, six weeks this time? Um, and, I mean, granted, that was COVID and everything, but the bottom line is if they were doing well and they was, if there was any promise, Vince certainly had the money to, to go and, and, and you know, stay the year to keep going until this thing turns around, and he chose not to, and that tells you all you need to know about how well he thought that it was truly going. So... Um, it's very difficult to be secondary and um, draw an audience. So that there, there's already that uphill battle. I mean, the, the, the times when a secondary company does well is always because there is a large number of people who believe the secondary company is actually the primary company. And that is it's essentially the key to the success of AEW in the long run is con if, if they do not convince people that they are enough people they're the primary company then they will be well behind because they won't be able you know that's that's really um you know that's really the game right there it, if you don't think you're if you can't compete for the top spot you're going to be um 
you're going to have a hard time keeping keeping your audience because especially right now when there's so many hours of television so it is going to but it's going to be very interesting uh what happens going forward but um you know i mean the the one if, if there is one thing that i really am seeing is the attempt you know there's so many guys that are on that show and you watch um that you know i mean they have so many talented guys and there's not enough television time to um to you know focus on them all of them you couldn't do it even if even if you had wwe amount of television time you couldn't focus on all the talented guys that you've got there like all your max casters and people like that there's just not enough time so you're gonna have to pick your team and go with this is my team and these are the young guys that i want to elevate and and that's my focus as opposed to trying to find out ideas to get every single person on television because that is you know, it's not it's not the factions that's the problem, but it is the attempt to get sixty people on television in, in a meaningful role in a two hour show. That's just um, too unwieldy, I think, for the average person to comprehend. And so that's you know, because at the end you you want you want the focus. It's like it's like I want to see this match and deliver this match in a timely fashion. Um, it could be. You know, a slow build for a pay-per-view match, for sure. But um, each week on TV, you should have two or three matches that you are, um, you know, not every, you know, especially when we're far away from the pay-per-view. When you're near the pay-per-view, then you can do everything focusing on the pay-per-view. Um, with WWE, because you got the pay-per-view every month, it's always essentially like that. If you got the pay-per-view every three months, then you should be going with the idea that whether it's, Every week or once a month, you have loaded shows with the top guys, with the main event matches um, that you have been building up as opposed to just having, you know, matches that, that may, in fact, in the ring be great matches. But, you you know, if, if it's not part of a, um, you know, if it's not something that's been directly built to a story and... You know the six mans and all that are great; they're fine, but but not every single week. You got to have, you should you you should at times have your your tags or six mans, but you need to have the singles. The singles conflicts in most cases are going to be your biggest thing, and I don't. I mean, we we got so much talent, and it's almost like one of these things where it feels like they're. I don't want to say afraid, but they are. They, they are shy about doing the matches people want to see with the idea that maybe we're going to burn them out by doing too many, but I don't think that's the case. I think like when I watch WWE and I watch AEW, I mean, WWE probably does too much, but they have maybe not, you know, I mean, but there's always, but, you know, with their their monthly thing, they're going to give you those those singles matches and those title matches every month, and with aw it's it's just like this this card this week i mean is there there's there's nothing on this card other than the six-man tag um which is the, like the third straight week of six-man tags and granted the match will be great last week's match was great too um but it's more than just that but it's it's um but that's the only one like max caster and adam page is just two guys thrown in there um the the bunny and Ty Conti was a little angle coming off of that, but that's not a marquee match. That's just something to do. Um, you know, I mean, that's not the destination. Ty Conti is the number one contender. The destination should be Ty Conti with Sheeta. Um, and if they do that match in the next couple of weeks, that's cool. But um, you know, I, I've seen so much time where, you know, again, like with Darby Allen and JD Drake, it's like we've had Ricky Starks and we've had Lance Archer. And we should have Cody. We should have all these lists of guys that want a shot at Darby Allen. Everybody should want a shot at Darby Allen. Um, Jungle Boy should want to start, you know, a shot at Darby Allen coming off of the match with Dax Harwood, um, where he looked so great and everyone was talking about him. And then there was really not a big follow up. And now he's wrestling Bear Country, who nobody knows, you know, and those are talented guys and all that. And, and perhaps if this is, you know, if this match is really good, it'll get Bear Country up and running. But, um, you know, all of these guys should be going against Darby Allen. And instead it's JD Drake, who has, I don't think even had a match on Dynamite. Um, and 
you know, it's I I mean I know Cody did well with bringing guys in that were independent guys and they would look good and get a job like they would with Eddie Kingston and Ricky Starks being the big prime things, and that's fine too. But you still want to have the guys that are you know you want those guys on TV, you know, in a meaningful direction. And I, I'm not seeing that in a lot of cases. So um, that's, I guess, one of the deals that's uh, th that's there. You know, as far as I just think that there needs to be, like, if I see an angle, man, I I I, I want to see that match within a month, unless it's a pay per view match, in which case, okay, you gotta hold it back, or it's something, you know, like a slow build story, which is fine. I mean, you want them. But for the most part, but that's the minority of things. You know, the the most of these angles should be this the angle this week leads to a match next week, you know, or the week after, as opposed to we do this big angle and then it's just not talked about next week or the week after. And then maybe there's a match and then maybe it's 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 not. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.